Hi, this is Lewis Paul, and welcome to the Colors of Prague. This is our 29th episode, and the last of 2021. Uh, Happy New Year to all those. Uh, my friends and followers on YouTube and Facebook throughout the world, uh, I really appreciate uh, people subscribing, watching, viewing these. Um, hopefully, I'll improve on things in episodes to come, shows to come, years to come, who knows, we'll see. Uh, so, what I planned on doing, and it's going to be a bit of an abbreviated program this time, uh, I kind of posted on my uh, own personal Facebook page things I listened to in the last two years because really they were conjunctive. They were 2020 and 2021 were kind of melded together because of the pandemic, which we are still in because there's a new variant called, called Omicron. But uh, needless to say, uh, so I posted what I was listening to these past two years. And so this is a, a two year best of. Um, and not to say that anything else was lesser I really enjoyed everything I listened to, but I have to say that uh, these were, were so much fun, I returned to them more often than other things. So, Goblin, Austin Nato, live in Austin, Texas. And this is from a show in 2014 in Austin, Texas, and um, it featured all the original members of Goblin, except Claudio Simonetti, who, as I mentioned in previous programs, he would flit in and out of Goblin, have his own Claudio Simonetti's Goblin. He'd be a new Goblin. And it's complicated. Anyways, it's quite a good show. It's a double CD set. That was originally released in 2016 and then re-released in 2021 by Back to the Fudda. A mysterious label in, uh, based in the U.S. and um, it sounds quite good. Um, not only does it have the usual, let's say, Goblin tracks you want to hear, it also has some of the material that Goblin, without Simonetti, has been recording and releasing. So it's it's quite a lot of fun. So it's Goblin live in Austin, Texas. I've been playing this quite a bit over there past two years. Camel, yes. The Snow Goose. I, if I was to be pressed to say what is my favorite Camel album, it's this. But this one, um, well, it contains the Snow Goose Extra tracks, single edits, etc., some live material from the, the BBC and the Marquee, and a live entire BBC concert of the Snow Goose uh, 1975 with other songs. Those of you who are not familiar with Camel, they won the great Canterbury bands. I discussed and mentioned Canterbury sound over the years, over the year, sorry, and I'm still flummoxed what that exactly means, but in either case, great album, mainly instrumental. And if I was to say, if someone was to ask me, what's the Camel album I should have and work backwards or forwards, the Snow Goose. And this contains everything you could possibly want. Really, really good album. I mentioned in the last program, this box set. And yeah, I hate to bring up something I already talked about so so recently, but this uh, Focus 50 Years Anthology, 7076, uh, contains, man, I don't know, nine CDs, two DVDs, tons of extra recordings, live material, singles. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Just a hint. Excellent, excellent work done by the Dutch label Red Bullet. Probably some of the finest remastering 
I've heard in a long time. I mean, terrific, absolutely terrific. And um, somebody had mentioned last uh, on the last program I did when I was discussing the. Um, uh, they have a CD here, Focus Place Focus, also called In and Out of Focus in Other Countries. And I mentioned um, not House of the King, but the, the great famous Hocus Pocus. And uh, this person said, well, Hocus Pocus is not on that album. Actually, they did record it as a single, and they added it to the extras on the first album. Focus 2, also called Moving Years, does have Hocus Pocus. Everybody knows that song. If not, check it on YouTube. I mean, it's just phenomenal. One of the most influential, and they were Dutch, one of the most influential progressive rock bands on anywhere, whether it be Italy, America, etc. Just tremendous. I love the sound on this. The DVDs are worth to have. Just excellent, excellent stuff. So, uh, best of, right? This is the best of show. So, the Neil Morris band, Innocence and Danger. Um, I have this on vinyl too, so it was easier just to bring out the CD where I got all my vinyl. And, um, uh, it's terrific. I mean, these guys have been at it for a long time. Corbin also has uh, Mike Portnoy on drums, vocals, whatever. And, you know, I, I get it where some people are not crazy about Neil Morris. I understand. I, it's because uh, a lot of his solo releases have some very spiritual to him material. And then there's the Neil Morse band, which has spiritual material. But he, okay, here's my take on that. I applaud him because he believes in so much of what he's doing. I mean, I agree with it. It just sounds good and I'm taken along with it. And you know, I okay, I enjoy what he's doing. This is pretty much a little bit Pulls back on that a bit. And uh, Innocence is a pretty terrific danger. It's pretty much a suite of two songs, and uh, both of them are fairly long. If you ever seen these guys live, they go on and play. One of the great prog rock bands. You know, and, and parts of these guys were in Transatlantic and Flying Colors, et cetera, et cetera. Really, one of my favorites of, of, of the year. And this is in danger. So, we're going to have two appearances by the same band today. So, uh, there's a lot of PFM material to wade through. It's, it's an ocean of, my gosh, this band's been around since the early 1970s. And I really like Chocolate Kings. And um, I actually have the American release album as well as the Italian original. Easier to show the CD. And I have to say, this is uh, the, when Bernardo Lanzetti from um, Aqua Fragile uh, joined the band. And then later, after two albums, booted to somewhere else. We'll talk about Bernardo Lanzetti another time, or more in depth because I really enjoy his singing, although it's singing that uh, not everyone would, would be uh, attuned to, because uh, you know, it's very theatrical, but this is a really good album. It's only like five or five songs here, and uh, I have an album which has more on it, and you know, so what is Chocolate Kings? And you know, it's it's actually uh, it's actually a uh, a record where a lot of people don't get it, but you know, these guys who are now in their seventies were children in the late forties and the mid forties, and so when the uh, 
the soldiers liberated Italy during World War II, they would give chocolate bars to the children, and probably to the women as well for reasons we're not going to discuss. But um, and that was the thing there, but the, the American soldiers were known as chocolate kings because they always gave candy because the kids never saw candy and, you know, during uh, the Nazi overthrow of Italy and during Mussolini's fascist regime because he tried to align with Hitler. Nobody, nobody knew what was going on. And then the American soldiers came in and the Allied forces, the British and the French came in and everybody's handing out chocolate. And we may not get that nowadays. We probably have no conception of the powerfulness of these tanks rolling in and these soldiers coming in and these, these poor starving kids and then these guys are handing out chocolate. You know, give me more chocolate. We gotta give these kids chocolate. And and that's where this comes from. So there's a whole lot of background to this. And these songs are quite good. For that reason alone, they have depth. And if and if you didn't know the background, you would just say, Oh, it's a weird collection of songs. No, it's really good. I listen to this pretty much often. Why? I like it. And and Knowing the history of it, it helps. Speaking of PFM, we're going to do a back-to-back. -back. This is their brand new release, 2021. This came out in November. I also have the vinyl of this. I Dream of Electric Sheep and Sagnato Picardi Electrici. They base it, they base this work on uh, Philip K. Dick's novella that became Blade Runner. And um, the cool thing about this is that uh, whether you get the vinyl or the CD edition, there's one in English and one in Italian. They both pretty much one the same. Wonderful, wonderful return to form. I mean, BFM had a, a couple of years where they were trying to become pop deal. They're still working at it and it's still French Ticicchio. is still the drummer and has become pretty much a lead singer. Great voice. And uh, how many bands can be around that long? Stay in the progressive rock realm in Italy and come out with something that just blows your mind. This blows my mind. This is terrific stuff. And I really highly recommend this. You can actually get this on Amazon or anywhere you wish. Um, Really good work. Came out in November 2021, I believe. And uh, just really good stuff. I like, I, I play it a lot. It's highly recommended. Now, what might you be hearing in the background is Concerto Grosso per 1 and 2 by the New Trolls. So this, this might be a band new to you. If you're really into prog rock uh, from other countries, you might have come across the name of New Trolls, and it's a band that members have left, and members have come back and returned, and then they became Atomic New Trolls, and then NT New Trolls. And Vittorio Di Scalzi is one of the prime members of the, of the band. They did these two albums, I actually have the vinyl for both, but again, it's easier just to hold up a CD. Um, it is a Concerto Grosso albums where they worked with Luis Bacala, who was the Argentine uh, film composer, I would say primarily. Uh, he did dramas, thrillers, action films in the uh, 1970s, primarily into the early 80s, and Luis Bacala did soundtracks of movies you won't believe. Um, you can Google Luis Bacala. Anyway, he worked with this Italian band and, and brought them into the studio and he says, we're going to rearrange some of your stuff and you do like a neoclassical kind of thing and just one of the best things. I mean, talk about, all right, so it's melodic, 
But it also has moments of, I mean, the band's got Hendrixian guitar, um, doo-wop, um, Everly Brothers. They really like a particular song. I don't want to spoil it for you. So there's that. New Trolls, I play this often. Um, speaking of which, a very recent release, Concerto Grosso, The Seven Seasons by New Trolls. Now, Vittorio Discalzi had left the band, he went solo for a while, and he has a solo work, I will discuss at another point in time. And so they kind of reunited with some of the Neutrals and Atomic Neutrals members, and uh, they did another recording. Um, and this is just incredible. This is just completely wonderful. This is from uh, 2007, which in my mind is not that long ago. It was 1997, so it might be a while ago, but it's really good. The Seven Seasons. Um, it has some works you, you might be familiar to from listening to the New Trolls Concerto Grosso 1 and 2 that I mentioned. It's also Concerto Grosso 3. But uh, again, a favorite of mine, this. So, uh, Toll. Benefit. Stephen Wilson remix, brand new, very recent. My favorite Toll album, and this will knock your socks off. Knock your socks off. Um, there's been discussions online about uh, Stephen Wilson remixes of uh, various uh, progressive rock, the King Crimson, uh, the Gentle Giant. King uh, Gentle Giant, uh, yes, which I, I actually like the box set. That's another discussion. But this benefit book edition, if you're going to buy, purchase a Jethro Tull book edition and don't wait forever because I believe these are, they only press so many of these and they're a bit of a limited edition, get benefit. I mean, not only is it my favorite album, but Stephen Wilson just really knocked it out of the park with the, the, the work he did on this. Finally, he understand the uh, differentiation between bass and treble to get it to the point where he knows how to pump it up correctly. Because he's very much a trebly guy, if you ask me. Um, and there's just a lot on here. There's extras, like the focus set, and there's the original recordings, not mixed by Stephen Wilson, but Stephen kind of did a little touch up on that. And his uh, Live in Tanglewood, uh, uh, which is in America, they did a they did this Tanglewood show. Tanglewood used to be a very popular place to see live bands. This is from 1970. The sound on that is not so terrific. Uh, probably the best you can get from a 1970 show. Much improved is Alive in Chicago. And there's two DVDs. There's the, uh, a blowout Dolby Atmos version of the audio of the Stephen Wilson remix. And there's this, the Tanglewood concert on video. Which is interesting because uh, I thought the video sounded better on that than the solo audio version. Anyway, benefit. Jethro Tull, a huge influence on so many bands from around the world. And I have to say, I've discussed it before in the past. Sometimes there are international uh, music festivals and they, they invite Ian Anderson to come. And he does appear, when he does appear, and he'll play with these bands. And uh, PFM, I just discussed, they did a show with, with Ian Anderson in uh, 2010, 2011, I believe. And uh, he, he shows up all over the world. And, you know, uh, some may say, well, you know, Tull's 
peak may have been blah 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 and you know it, it continues to surprise I will say that but benefit one of my favorites so last thing I will leave you with is uh, I will discuss in length because I mentioned it before but not so much in length the Stephen Wilson remix box of the uh, most of the Yes albums uh, the early ones uh, which which I quite applauded. I, I, I thought they sound terrific. So uh, everyone knows The Quest came out very recently, which is a new Yes album, made up of uh, tracks, recordings, bits and pieces of stuff from the last couple of years that they finally assembled, produced by Steve Howe, and not by... and not by Billy Sherwood, who I always found fascinating because Billy's the bass player. And then the, the, a lot of the, some of the recent Yes albums and most of the recent Yes live albums, and God knows there's a lot of those, have been like bass light, very troubling. And it's like, if you're a bass player and you're producing an album, why is the bass so like not prominent? Anyway, that being said, um, so this finally came out, The Quest. And recently, within the past week or two of the end of 2021, a lot of uh, online sites have been releasing their best of 2021 music. And the crest has either not shown up at all or showed up really low in the ratings. And I'll tell you something. Yes is one of my uh, five top favorite bands of all time. It's true. And I've seen them many, many, many times over the years with different incarnations. Um, I've only seen one or two shows that were not up to spiff, but hey, you know, the, the, the guys are getting older. But this, this album CD, I find it definitely lacks something. It lacks it's almost like a lot of interest in the band members. I don't know. Maybe I've said this before about some of the live Yes albums. They should hand it over to someone else to produce. Someone who's very much in tune to the band. Someone who's very much a very big fan of the band, like a lot of us are. Remix these tapes. Put them out there. Yes still has a very large, large market of fans and listeners. And, and you put this out, and okay, there's the Ice Bridge, which is a very uh, fine song. Uh, there's even a bonus disc of three three other songs. And I, and there's a lot discussed about, there's one song that's a, a bit of like Beatlesque. I don't mind that. Um, it's just, it just sounds disinterested. A dis, an album from a disinterested band um, who's been around for like 50 plus years. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with this, but and I've said this before, I do revisit material later on and, and I might like it again. So I'm saying this was the best of, this is probably the most disappointing release of the last two years. Um, that being said, I know people like the quest, so, you know, God bless you. <laughs> Throw it on the side. Anyway, so, Happy New Year. I will see you all again in 2022. Wow, we made it this far. And for those who didn't, uh, we think of you. Be well out there. Be safe.